Hey everyone, Mark from The Top Homeowner, and today we're gonna to talk a little bit about GFCI outlets and the practice of replacing two-prong outlets with a GFCI outlet in order to not have to rewire a house. We're gonna talk about the pros and cons of doing this and whether or not it's safe and legal. All right, so in large part, this is a follow-up video to a previous video I had done, uh, an old house where we had renovated the upstairs. It was a two-story house with a full basement. We had a lot of older two-prong outlets in the house and we wanted to upgrade them to a three-prong outlet without having to rewire the entire house because on a three-story house, basically, going all the way from the basement all the way up to the second floor, on that size of a house, uh, having to rewire that, you'd have to tear out drywall and you'd have a significant expense when it comes to rewiring and all the repair work that would be involved. So in order to avoid that, we ended up going with a different solution, which was replacing the two-prong outlets with a GFCI outlet. So just to be sure we're clear about what we're talking about here, this is a modern day ungrounded outlet. So you can see here, there's no uh, ground plug, no third plug here to receive a ground. This is a polarized outlet, which means that one side is smaller than the other. Uh, small is always gonna be the hot side. But other than that, there's no ground. So this is a problem for modern day equipment when it comes to things like computers and appliances. They need a ground in order to be able to function and function safely. In order to fix that problem, typically what you have to do is to rewire your entire house. Another option that you have is to replace this with one of these, which is a GFCI outlet. Now, the reason why this works, and this is something that not very many people talk about, is because on this, you don't have to have a ground wire in order for a GFCI receptacle to work. And the reason is because there is electronics inside of this that monitors the difference between the amount of electricity coming out of the hot side and the amount of electricity coming into the neutral side. These two things should be the same or very close to the same. If they're not, uh, something is wrong, essentially. So the circuitry is designed to detect this and it's designed to shut this off inside of this receptacle, whether or not there's a ground present. On my previous video, there were a lot of questions about how this works. Does it work? Should it work? Should you do this? Should you not do this? Is it legal? So I'm gonna answer your top questions one by one. All right, so question number one, is this the same thing as having a ground wire installed? And the answer is simply no, it's not. Also, if you have something that requires uh, ground, if it's sensitive electronics, for example, uh, that it needs to have a ground in order to make sure it functions uh, properly, then you need to make sure you're plugging this uh, that device into a grounded outlet. If this isn't the same thing as having a ground, then why do this in the first place? So what typically happens is if you have a house that only has the two prong receptacles and you have things that have three prongs that need to be plugged in, a lot of times what people will do is they'll actually install one of these or they'll use one of these. It's just an adapter that you can use to uh, plug in a uh, three prong plug into this side and then this plugs into a two prong um, receptacle. Um, this is okay, but I'd rather have a GFCI outlet to provide a little bit more protection uh, rather than just rely on this adapter. Also, with these adapters, um, they have this little um, this little area here that allows you to take the faceplate screw and screw this in place. And all that's designed to do is to hold this adapter in place so it doesn't fall out. Um, a lot of people confuse that because it's actually close to the grounded plug. They confuse that and they think that that provides the ground, but it doesn't. The other thing that I've seen people do is they'll take that third prong that grounded prong and they'll actually cut it off or they'll remove it completely, which is also a bad practice. So I'd rather have, I'd much rather have the GFCI outlet in place providing um, some protection than using an adapter like this. Probably the biggest question about this is whether or not this is actually legal. Is this something legal that you can do? And the answer is most likely. And the reason I say most likely is because per the NEC code, um, this is an acceptable practice and I'll um, reference the section where that is listed in the latest edition of the NEC at the time of this recording, which is the 2020 edition. But the reason why it may not be acceptable is if you have local codes in your area that don't allow for it. Now, you always wanna make sure when you're doing any kind of electrical work that you're not all, only following the national codes, but also the local codes in your area. Also, uh, these receptacles can protect not only uh, this, the location where this is installed, but these can also protect any other receptacles that are attached to it in the circuit. Um, in my previous video, I referenced placing this as the first outlet air receptacle in the room, and that's not exactly true. In my case, it was. That was actually the uh, first receptacle on the circuit. Um, but if you're gonna install this in your house, you wanna make sure that you put the GFCI 
receptacle in the first location on the circuit. Otherwise, what you're gonna end up doing is you're gonna have multiple GFCI receptacles on a single circuit, which isn't really a problem as it's concerned to safety, but it is kind of annoying if you end up tripping one you might think, well, why is the GFCI receptacle here not have power? Well, it's actually because it's on another GFCI receptacle in another location in the house. It gets really confusing really quick. Another question that came up is why not use GFCI breakers? And uh, they do make GFCI breakers, and that is absolutely an option that you can use if you have this situation. The reason why we didn't do that this in our house is because the electrical panel that was installed in this house, this is a house that was built in the 60s, uh, the electrical panel simply wouldn't accept a GFCI uh, breaker. And so we would have had to have the complete panel redone, which would have been about a four to $5,000 expense uh, in and of itself. So we chose not to go that way. When you install this, something that I didn't cover in that video is that you need to make sure you have uh, placed a sticker on the front of the receptacle that says no ground. Now these typically come in the box with a GFCI receptacle. Um, so you need to put that sticker on not only the GFCI receptacle that you installed, but also any of the other receptacles in that circuit that that GFCI receptacle is protecting. Some other comments were that if you install this GFCI receptacle, it's still gonna show an open ground. And that is absolutely 100% true. Um, this isn't gonna give you a true ground. This is just a way to help protect that receptacle and the other receptacles that are in that circuit. Um, and it's better than not having anything in place. Obviously rewiring your house is the best option, but sometimes that's not the most practical solution. And so this is something that you can do instead of that. Another comment we received was about uh, not installing the wire in the back of the receptacle. And to be honest with you, I disagree with that. And I disagree with that for a couple of reasons. One is because I've never seen a GFCI outlet have a uh, backstab or a push-in option. Now, I'm gonna explain what that is here. Um, on a typical receptacle, and this is on a residential receptacle, um, you've got this option to be able to push wires in the back here in order to wire it. And uh, I won't go into the details of why that exists, but just know that these wires are held on with a tiny clip inside and they can loosen up over time. So I would not recommend using that. Um, but I will say on a GFCI receptacle and on commercial grade receptacles, um, the back wiring option is actually clamp based. So you stick the wire in from the back and it goes underneath this clamp and then you use the side terminal screw to tighten the wire down. There's absolutely no problem with this. If you have any comments about that and why you think that's not acceptable, I'd love to hear from you, so leave me a comment below. And last but not least, there was a safety comment that we had on the video that talked about making sure that when we were trying to figure out where the line was coming into the, into the outlet box, which wires were hot, basically, that I had the power back on and I didn't have anything protecting the wires. And that is absolutely true. I should have had wire nuts on the end, so I appreciate the comments that I got about that. Um, if you do that in your own house, uh, make sure you have wire nuts on, make sure you have everything protected and as safe as possible when you're working with electricity. And also, it kind of goes without saying, but if you're not comfortable with working uh, with electricity, you probably shouldn't be doing this job. I would highly recommend you consult a licensed electrician and have them take care of this for you and maybe give you some additional options that you might not be thinking about, depending on what your situation is with your house. If you're interested in the other videos I have on GFCI receptacles, I'll have those at the end here. Um, I've got another one that talks about how to uh, wire a GFCI receptacle that goes into a little bit more depth and also the original video that talks about uh, replacing the uh, two prong receptacles with GFCI. So I encourage you to check both of those out. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Please like and subscribe uh, if you like to stay tuned to all the tips and tricks we have at the top homeowner. Thanks for watching. We will see you in the next one.